Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Ungifted. We are going to start Chapter 4. So Chapter 4 is called Unarmed. And previously, we know that Donovan is was waiting to get in trouble by the Superintendent Schultz, didn't get called down, was curious why, and now just got an invite to the Gifted program. So he's guessing that maybe his posted note with his name on it went on the wrong pile. But the superintendent can't find him if he's not at the school, so he's going to go through with it. Unarmed. Uh, is chapter four. Um, it uh, starts on page 31 and it's got a new character, Chloe Garfinkel, IQ 159. Hypothesis, being gifted is not a gift. A gift you get for nothing. This you have to pay for. Okay, I know it's not a real hypothesis. By that I mean something you can design and experiment to test, but it's true. There's a price to being gifted. The cost is your life. You don't die or anything like that, but you don't live either. Free time, forget it. You go to a special academy that gives you extra work to suck up every spare minute, especially since it probably takes forever to get there. Schools for the gifted are few and far between. Chances are you don't live near one. Friends, those are the people you slave alongside. They might be awesome, but how would you ever find out? You're too busy for them and they're too busy for you. Sports, when? And besides, when you play, you probably stink. Hypothesis. Athletic ability exists in inverse proportion to intelligence. Technically untrue, there are plenty of smart athletes, but not many compared to the number of brilliant sofa spuds. What about TV or video games? Oh, please, you're far too smart for that. Pep rallies? For what, the robotics team? Forget it. And the same goes for school dances, funny hat day, drama club, charity drives. Dances? Repeated Abigail Lee when I brought up the subject in homeroom. Who do you want to dance with? Him? She pointed at skinny, needle-nosed Noah Euclidus. She had a point. Most of the guys at the Academy for Scholastic Distinction weren't exactly what you'd call Hollywood hunks. I didn't expect bodybuilders, but it would be nice if you could grow a set of shoulders in between the lot of them. And it wouldn't hurt to spend a little time outdoors to put some color in those prison pale faces. Hypothesis. Sun, lamp, enhanced computer monitors, perhaps. Then again, being smart requires you to examine things from all sides. Why pick on the guys? We girls weren't exactly homecoming queens either. Abigail was a genius biochemist, but her greatest fashion statement was her white lab coat. She looked like she hadn't combed her hair since 2007. Or me, for that matter. I scored a perfect 2400 on every SAT practice test in sixth grade. But who was I to talk? Here I was, almost 14, and I'd never danced with a guy who wasn't related to me. I'd never been to a party except for kitty things with balloons. I wasn't going on the cover of Seventeen anytime soon, that was for sure. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a dance, I told Abigail, but why can't it be something? Every day millions of kids around this country do millions of normal activities and they have a great time at it. Why can't we? The statewide robotics meet is coming up, she offered. Sigh. I took robotics. I was good at it. I was good at all of it. I totally belonged at this school. But why did it have to mean that I couldn't be a regular person, too? Mr. Osborne, our homeroom teacher, was also the head of the robotics team, breezed into the lab. Let's hurry up and take attendance. We've got a lot to do today. We were all there. Where else would we be? We were any teacher's dream, yet at that moment it made me sad. I had no desire to cut class, but maybe that was the problem. When was the last time one of us broke the rules? This morning, while checking on my experiment in the growth of hydroponic flax, I noticed the paper I taped to my desk lamp to concentrate the beam onto the seedlings. It was a certificate of merit I had received for perfect attendance at school. I had earned seven of these over the years. And what use were they to me? Makeshift lampshades? Hypothesis. Is there a point where the robotic student becomes the robot? When was the last time anybody showed up late? Sorry I'm late. A tall, sandy-haired boy appeared at the door. Is this Mr. Osborne's class? This is the robotics lab, the teacher replied, and you are? Donovan Curtis, the newcomer replied, waving a printed form. I'm supposed to be in this homeroom. Right, our fresh blood from Hardcastle Middle. Oz accepted the paper and examined it. Abigail leaned over to me. This can't be right. He's coming to the school? I was intrigued. You know him? We went to the same elementary. He's the kid who jumped off the roof with one of those Jimboree parachutes. I sized him up. He was kind of cute in a careless, wind-blown way. Great eyes, black fringed, pale blue. Well, he must be smart if he passed all the tests to get in here. Abigail was unconvinced. Maybe. But he would have to change a lot since I knew him. I bit my tongue. Okay, so Abigail thought he was dumb, but next to her, everybody was dumb. 
I was probably pretty dense compared to her. If Donovan Curtis didn't measure up to Lee standards, that hardly made him stupid. There were no dim bulbs at our school, but that's not to say we didn't range from somewhere bright to super bright. And in a few cases, like Abigail and Noah, supernova. She was telling me about Donovan getting his tongue frozen to a chain-like fence one winter, but by that time I'd stopped listening. I'd never met this new kid, but I already had him perfectly sized up in my mind. Donovan Curtis was normal. Normal. We had a lot of talents in our homeroom. Normalcy wasn't one of them. Noah's IQ was off the charts, but he had yet to hold a conversation with a real human being this year. Most of the time, he didn't even make eye contact. He always seemed to be speaking to the empty space over your left shoulder. Or J.C. Halloran, who had already discovered an uncharted galaxy, galaxy, but still couldn't figure out how to open a combination lock. Or Latrell Michelson, our mechanic marvel, who took cars apart and put them back together again blindfolded for fun. He couldn't manage to wrap his mind around the fact that we had to wait in the food line to buy his lunch. Every single day was World War III in the cafeteria. We had kids who set academic records and published books, won every conceivable prize in honor. We had kids who could quote you the exact line of dialogue that spoke in 94 minutes and 30 seconds into the Matrix or the Return of the Jedi. What was missing was somebody, anybody normal. I am the great and powerful Oz, Mr. Osborne told the newcomer in a mystical tone. He said that to everybody the first time he met them. Technically, this is Homeroom 107, but you've probably noticed that it looks like a cross between a mad scientist's lair and a garbage dump. We do robotics here. Even if you're not taking robotics this semester, I hope you'll help out with the team. It's a pretty big deal here at the Academy. He turned to the rest of us. Guys, meet Donovan. Donovan, the guys. There was a very lukewarm chorus of greeting. Another thing about the Academy, being gifted rarely extended to social skills. My enthusiastic hi stood out embarrassingly among the other murmurs. Donovan ignored us. Instead, he faced our latest robot, a work in progress for this year's competition. What's his name? We were all stunned. Noah spoke up. It's not a he, it's an it. It's a mechanical device, and as such, it has no name. Donovan blinked. Robots have names. Haven't you ever seen Star Wars? Was he kidding? Half of us could recite Star Wars. We've been doing this for a long time, Abigail informed him in a superior tone. We've made finals three years in a row. And we did it with science, by not by calling our entry Harry or Fred. A few others spoke up in agreement. To be honest, I was on their side. The robot wasn't a toy or a pet. It was a machine. I kept my mouth shut, though. Poor Donovan had only been in the class for about 30 seconds, and we were already jumping all over him. We'll pause there.